Hello and welcome to Revolutionary Spaces Quarantine Quarter. My name is Katie Livingston and I am an education assistant at the Old State House and also the Old South Meeting House. Today I'm going to be telling you one of my favorite snippets that I share on my tours. It is going to be a story about Dr. Joseph Warren, famous colonial hot doctor. Many may not know his name because tragically he doesn't survive through the end of the revolution and he's lost to the annals of time. But this story is very near and dear to my heart. Um, Dr. Joseph Warren was born in Roxbury in 1741. I actually live in Roxbury. I actually live at the cross street of Warren Street, so this is very exciting for me. Uh, but this story is not about his life. It is about his death at the Battle of Bunkers Hill, which should actually be Battle of Breeds Hill. Now, um, this battle happens on June 17th, 1775, and it is an incredibly bloody battle of which Dr. Joseph Warren does not survive. Um, he is going to be one of the uh, strongest rabble rousers here in Boston. He is fomenting revolution. He is inspiring his fellow patriots such as John Hancock and Samuel Adams and Paul Revere. He even instigates Paul Revere's famous ride, um, one if by land, two if by sea. But he is going to be a very strong leader here, uh, especially in military. Uh, he said that he would die in his knees in blood to his mother, not a very nice thing to send to your mother. I'm sure she was terrified and worried for him and she had every right to be so because uh, British soldiers wanted to kill him. Uh, he would walk through the streets of Boston delivering house calls with two flintlock pistols on his person at any given time. It was a dangerous time to be walking through Boston, especially as a primary Patriot leader. Now, he decided to go guns blazing through Bunker Hill. Uh, he put himself at the front of the line with his men uh, in a very courageous act, but tragically he was shot down during what is called the redoubt, which is when they were actually um, reversing. They were trying to get out because they were losing, they being the Patriots in this sense. Uh, he was one of the last people to leave the battlefield and he was one of the last people to be shot. He was shot right under the eye, uh, which killed him instantly. He dropped like a bag of bricks and that was tragically not the only thing that happened to his person. Uh, the British soldiers seeing Joseph Warren on the ground decided to bayonet his body beyond recognition, stripping him of his finery, his jewelry, and personal effects. Uh, he was then dumped in a mass grave with his fellow patriots, something that he would have probably thought was very symbolic, but was a tragedy for his friends and family. It was also dangerous to get to the battlefield. Patriots couldn't go and easily grab their bodies, especially because of the mass grave. Uh, it was going to be months later when two of his brothers and his best friend, Paul Revere, returned to find his body. In the first indication of our knowledge of dental forensics, Paul Revere actually found Joseph Warren's head, which was actually cut off of his body uh, by seeing the dental work that Paul Revere himself had done. Silversmithing in Boston at this time period was often supplemented by being a dentist because you're going to be putting fillings and metalwork in people's mouths. A walrus tooth connected to another tooth via a gold wire was how Paul Revere found his friend's body and was able to finally give it the proper burial it deserved, where it was first interred in Granary Burying Ground, which is near both of our sites, and then later in Forest Hill Cemetery in the 1800s. Now, this is a very quick story that I wanted to tell you, but one that is very interesting to me. I hope you guys are staying healthy and well in this time of quarantine, especially considering the fact that Joseph Warren did inoculations in the 1760s to protect Boston from disease. So stay home, stay healthy, and thank you for listening.